Yes, and we're back with a second session of the interviews from the men's under 16 three on three basketball team. And now join me on set is Donald Liru on my immediate right, the second vice chairman from Kenya Basketball Federation, who also man in charge of youth and development at the Federation of, and of course, Imani on my right. And my father right is Dylan Okanda, players from this particular team. And just for the intro, just in case you're joining us, this is the team that did win bronze at the Dakar tournament. It was a tournament that was organized by IOC as well as ANOCA that Kenya took part in as preparations for the 2026 Youth Olympic Games which will be hosted in Africa for the first time and Dakar will be the host city. Karibuni sana on the touchline. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very and, uh, much. For, I'll begin with you Donald. This really um, speaking to, Zed, uh, to Zedekia earlier on right. and now for you I think will be the right person to answer this, the impact of the programs that you put in place. Yeah, sure. We, we are very grateful that we had an opportunity for our young men to represent us at the international stage and for their great performance. And uh, maybe before I get into the impact, I would like to thank uh, the president of... Uh, the National Olympic Committee, that is uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Target, for ensuring that our team participated. He was there himself in Dakar to witness these young men uh, come up with the bronze. I would also like to appreciate our president of the Federation, Kenya Basketball Federation, Mr. Paul Otula. Strangely, both of them are called Paul. And um, for working behind the scenes together with our Secretary General to ensure that um, our team traveled. Um, it cannot be understated that the performance of these young people, leave alone the participation, is a great boost for the youth basketball in this country. As has been stated earlier by Coach Zaidi, we've had a um, kind of hiatus, a uh, kind of break where we didn't participate at the international level for the youth teams for some time. We prepared, we've prepared teams before, but I've had challenges presenting them at the international stage. So for us to be able to participate and then to get to the podium, I think this is huge. It has sent shockwaves around that Kenya is back at the youth level and we are, I'm sure, mm -hmm. ready to compete effectively. Yes, Imani, your experiences from participating in this particular tournament and also coming back uh, with a medal, a bronze for that matter. How important and relevant is this for you and how does it make you feel? Okay, firstly, I'd like to say uh, it's a pleasure being here and it's, it was a really valuable experience gaining exposure, playing with taller, older players, uh, some more athletic and it's it really just feels nice inside me that you played for Kenya and you brought back a medal mm -hmm. and a podium finish yours. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Dylan? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank um, uh, you for having us on the show. I also want to thank the Federation because uh, they, they ensured that we had a we were very well taken care of during the time in Senegal. Mm -hmm. And overall, it was a very uh, good experience. I feel like it's good to be exposed to these international tournaments, even though it's just a friendly tournament. Yeah, overall, it was just a really good experience. Mm -hmm. the, the tournament, I mean, the result that you achieved in, um, in Senegal really uh, binds you together forever, but now the more, more, more work coming up next. How, how ready are the players for this particular uh, journey that's coming up, qualifying for the 2026 Youth Olympic Games, which you've had like a small test of what is it like? I think from now on, we'll just be working towards uh, being even more prepared for the qualifiers for the actual Youth Olympics uh, later on in 2026, 20, 2025. And I think that's from now on, we just keep working hard. I feel like now we're going to have at least a bit more time to prepare. But I feel like from now we just keep working mm -hmm. to ensure maybe getting even better results at the actual Youth Olympics. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think made Kenya have reached such, uh, such a performance in, in Dakar when there were other, of course, opposition from the rest of the teams? I feel like uh, just during those games, at times I just feel like we just wanted the results more than the other team. Mm -hmm. And I think we showed that on the court and also off the court. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just think we just wanted it more than the mm -hmm. other teams. Imani, Kenya wanted, you wanted it more. Why, why was this result 
relevant to the team? Why did Kenya want it more, as Dylan has stated? Okay, first of all, mm -hmm. we're representing Kenya mm -hmm. and we're representing the whole of East Africa because mm -hmm. we're the only East African team in the tournament. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Yes, and now what, what lies next? I mean, the journey, how do you see the qualification route and how it will be? Do you think that the team has had that proper view of what to expect? Okay, as Kodzedi said earlier, he is confident in the qualifications and um, we just have to keep putting in work off the court and on the court and we need to keep going for training consistently and uh, staying with our studies and getting better every single day. Mm -hmm. The program, of course, uh, coach, being there at the Dakar uh, Festival and also this big one coming up, this the Youth Olympics, and Kenya just taking part in this particular program, definitely it did give Kenya uh, a view of what it is for, for, for them to be in this tournament. Talk about the legacy of this uh, event, uh, to especially to the Kenyan team. Uh, definitely, this... Um is a, a, a momentous time for basketball in Kenya, as, as I would like to state. And there's going to definitely be an explosion of basketball activity. Uh, when we appreciate the fact that this year we've had opportunity to compete at under 16 and at under 18 in the FIBA zone competitions, and now the 3x3, what it means for us is that there's every reason to believe that when we work out with these young people, they are going to give us a lot more than what we would have dreamed, dream, dreamt of. Mm -hmm. we, we are in a season of a very long holiday. If you look at uh, what is happening across the country, there's a lot of youth... Um, basketball going on. There are different camps running um, uh, uh, three-week programs. There are those running six-week programs into December. And when this is replicated across the country, I am sure that we are going to have an even bigger pool of players, and not just boys, even the girls mm -hmm. are not going to be left behind. So eventually, Kenya is coming back strongly as a basketballing nation. And uh, this will impact well even into the senior mm -hmm. senior teams mm -hmm. and of course the success of this particular team what kind of uh, how do you want to continue this um it's it's obvious that uh we need now to establish a running program of um either a, a running periodic camps um earlier on it was mentioned by coach, coach zedi mm -hmm. and um that it is important for us to have scouting across the country. And I think it will, uh, we are going to tap into the inter-school games very strongly. Mm -hmm. We are very happy that JSS has also adopted basketball. The primary schools are also adopting basketball in their competitions. Mm -hmm. So together with the secondary schools and uh, what we are running now in the different camps, then if the federation is able to bring these players that we are uh, scouting together mm -hmm. at the end of maybe the school competitions, mm -hmm. you can be sure that there will be a very different outlook uh, as far as the game is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited to note that we have a lot of young coaches. You know, that is a manpower. When you have the, the human resource, then you're able to move. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of young coaches, some mm -hmm. who have been working with these boys, mm -hmm. like when we had the, the under 16, mm -hmm. people like Rose Mushila, mm -hmm. people like Martin Okwako, and they, are doing what we expect, giving a standardized way of training. And maybe as we go forward, we want to have a syllabus that will enable us all at the different, in the different areas of our country to train the same way. Mm -hmm. If it is shooting, we are shooting the same way. If it's passing, we are passing the same way. Mm -hmm. We develop our players so that when we call them to the national team, mm -hmm. it is easy for them to integrate. Mm -hmm. And of course, so uh, as far as their qualification for the 2026, maybe you can just talk about what the Federation has plans in terms of making sure that the team gets in camp uh, in time and also uh, quality preparations. Uh, well, um, uh, right now what uh, we are working towards uh, at the Federation level mm -hmm. is to ensure that there is consistency. You know, we've had these um, situations where we form teams ad hoc. 
on the need basis. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think going forward now, even before uh, from this uh, before this team was formed, there was a bigger pool of players from whom they were Picked selected. From, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so even those that w didn't go to Senegal mm -hmm. are still going to have an opportunity to come and challenge for a spot on the national team. Yes, on the national team. Mm -hmm. And Imani, while in Dakar, um, at what point do you think you got into the rhythm? Um, I think I got into the rhythm the first game. Mm -hmm. I came out knowing what I wanted mm -hmm. and the entire team came out with a clear objective to win. And I think uh, that we got into the groove of things in the first game, mm -hmm. which was versus Senegal. Mm -hmm. We ended up losing by one point, mm -hmm. but I don't think it was deserved due to uh, a technical like issue, mm -hmm. a, a technical mistake. Mm -hmm. how, yeah. how, how did this make the whole team? What kind of um, belief or, or, or effect do, did it have to the team losing in that way, to the hosts as well? Mm -hmm. it, it just motivated us further to keep on pushing and go after the next game with a better mentality and get the win. Mm -hmm. And for Daylan, at what point maybe did you get uh, I feel like it was, uh, like Mani said, that first game. Uh, of course, it was pretty unfortunate that we went down due to a technical issue. But like Mani said, this gave us even more motivation to play even harder those next couple of games. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yes. And the bronze medal match against Algeria too close in overtime, right? Yeah, it was what? a very uh, close game. But uh, at the end, it also went into overtime. But at the end, like we just showed that we wanted it more than Algeria. And yeah, fortunately, we got the result that we wanted mm -hmm. out of that game. Yeah, and Imani, of course, being in the team and inspiring Kenya to, Zedi said, it was the first time ever, you know, Ken a Kenyan team has beaten the Algerians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it definitely feels good that we set the stage for people coming afterwards to yeah. keep uh, this standard and raising the standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did it require for the team to win, especially the bronze match? It took a lot. Algeria. Uh, they, are, they are a very big team and we just needed to come out physical and we, we, we just had to make our shots, which we did, mm -hmm. and we're grateful that we came third. Mm -hmm. Nice. And for Dylan as well, what, what do you think it needed for, for the team and the rest of the team to, what did it require from them? I think it just required that we all needed to put in effort, like not this one person is doing all the rebounding, all the shooting, but it required like a joint effort from all of us. And that's what we did in that mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. And for the time that maybe you play basketball, what has it taught you? It's a sport that requires what? Uh, I feel like it's a, a sport that requires a lot of consistency. As in, I started basketball, I think, around uh, 2021, 2022. And just from there, I've tried my best to like stay consistent uh, throughout that time. And yeah, I think it's just a matter of consistency. Mm -hmm. was, it the, was it the first pick that uh, basketball is the first pick as far as sports is concerned? Uh, no, I had started off with uh, football, as in I went to a British system school. So when I was there, we played like a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it wasn't my first pick. I started off with football. Mm -hmm. But even through those other sports, it's kind of helped me with basketball. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And what informed the switch, the change? Um, Do you regret going to basketball? Uh, no, I don't regret it at all. Uh, I just remember like the first times I was uh, started basketball, it kind of felt different from when I was playing football. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this, uh, I just noticed this feeling that I preferred basketball over football. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I've just been working to uh, better my game. Mm -hmm. How does the dream look like now? Of course, the Youth Olympics is one of them for the country and for individually. Uh, individually, uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, undecis indecisive right now. I'm still trying to figure that out, but um, I'm just going to keep uh, getting better and better mm -hmm. and see where it goes from there. Mm -hmm. Imani, for you, basketball is a natural one? No, mm -hmm. I, I first started with swimming at three years old, and I also started with uh, football. Mm -hmm. I used to be a striker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then later on, I realized uh, I, was, I was way taller than everyone and, uh, at, at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to like take a deviation from football. I don't know. I I just wasn't uh, feeling it fully. So mm -hmm. I tried basketball, and mm -hmm. I used to grow a love for it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nice one, and you picked it. What well, no? And individually, how what, what do you want to maybe play pro? Yeah, I want to play professional basketball in the NBA. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nice one, and of course the road is paved 
Mr. Lee, Rusi. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and uh, I, I think we should mention that their parents have been very supportive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to admonish parents to get into their children's lives to support them, especially once you recognize that a child has the kind of talent mm -hmm. that um, can be nurtured. Mm -hmm. And their parents have been very, very key mm -hmm. to their performance, mm -hmm. coming to w watch their training, coming to... Um, to Allowing them to travel. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, even, even just processing their travel documents mm -hmm. and things. And that's why I would like to say that for our parents, once you notice your child has the kind of talent that they have, prepare mm -hmm. them for traveling. Mm -hmm. Get the passport so that we are not running around looking for passports last, last minute. minute. Mm -hmm. No, just get the necessary documents in advance. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Thank you so much, Mr. Liru. Uh, maybe a parting shot that this particular program will be going on as well as strengthening the what goes on at the KSSA. Yeah, um, uh, uh, on the whole, mm -hmm. We want that our youth are actively involved in basketball at all levels, right from mini basketball up to the youth level so that as they grow, they grow with the game. Many of, like some of us started basketball maybe in high school, mm -hmm. but if we start these children early and they grow up, our development as a country in as far as the competition is concerned and even the game for recreation, mm -hmm. Uh, apart from the competition, mm -hmm. for recreation, mm -hmm. will go a long way. Yes, thank you. And for Imani now, uh, what, what does it look like now as we wind up uh, the opportunities that basketball has offered you, and now you're dreaming, uh, the Olympic dream is alive. Various opportunities in basketball, and um, there will be multiple in the future, such as Dakar 2026, and we just hope to be prepared by then. Mm -hmm. And for you, Dylan? Yeah, I just want to thank the Federation for all these opportunities they've given us, especially in terms of basketball. And then also my family, they've been extremely supportive of all the activities that I've been doing in terms of basketball. And yeah, very thankful. Yes, and of course for the country promise that you'll call, help do all your best uh, for during the Dakar 2026 Youth Qualifiers, right? Yeah, uh, it was an extreme burden to um, uh, represent our country. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I was extremely honored to represent Kenya Thank at such you. a high level. Okay, it is a burden and also their dreamers for the Olympics in 2026 and of course a bigger one, 2028 in LA. May you keep on holding it down for the, on behalf of the Republic as always, right? And everybody else will be waiting to bask in the glory that you'll bring. But of course, the big journey began and we know now what you can do with that particular bronze finish at the, in Dakar. That's how we end it on our second session of the interview. Thank you so much, Dylan and uh, Imani, as well as Mr. David Leru for turning up for the touchline on Y254. And all the best in your endeavors, right? Thank you. Yes, and Thank we'll you. be back with the fans on the last bit of the show, so don't go too far.